what's been going on. We'll we'll go to, as directly as we can today. I know you're dealing with some symptoms. When did this start for you? Well, it actually started when I was 22. I'm 30, 36 now, 35. And um, yeah, it started when I was 22. I was living in Barcelona by then in Spain. And I went to the urologist and they did like many, many tests for me. And they were like, well, this is, by then it was called prostatitis in, in Spain. I don't know how it was called here. But now they start calling it the pelvic chronic pain. Yeah. And it was when I was 22 and then I moved to Edinburgh and I was dealing with pain always, like, especially like some, some days I have pain, like in the prostate, you know, like the sort of like pain in there and then pain when uh, urinating and stuff like that. And for many, many years, I was dealing with the pain and I started going to the gym and it started getting slightly better. And because I was focused at the university, I was studying. It didn't bother me that much because I was focused and focused on just getting my degree and stuff like that. But then once I, I got my degree and that was last year, well, it was two years ago. And then after that, I got a job, a full-time job, and as a video editor, so I was sitting down all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I started having some issues, and I started getting a lot of stress and anxiety. And then it's when it hit me, like, really, really bad. And that was a year ago from now. So when it hit me that bad, I was to the point that I couldn't even pee. Like, it was horrible. So I, I actually thought that I have an infection or something. So again, I went for antibiotics and this and that, and it didn't help. So I started doing yoga, started going to the gym again, and I started looking at all, you know, all the things that are in YouTube, such as you and other people talking about the diet, the meditation, yoga, sports, et cetera, et cetera. So, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been a long road to get here. It's been a challenging mm -hmm. experience to go through this for so many years. On and off, I know that it wasn't all at once, but this is very common. And if you look back at your life in other areas, you most likely have dealt with other manifestations of what we call mind-body syndrome. So like I dealt with CPPS for five years and it was very extreme. But now that I understand how mind-body syndrome works and that it's created in the brain, I look back as a child and I had headaches that weren't explained by doctors. They couldn't figure out what was going on with me. I had urinary issues when I was a kid. Um, even after healing my pelvic floor dysfunction, I was like, I'm better. This is amazing. But I still had some digestive problems and I also had headaches come up again. What happens if we don't address the root cause, symptom imperative phenomenon takes place and you have different manifestations of mind, body, syndrome symptoms. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, mind body syndrome is just a word, but it's a label. It's also known as TMS or neuroplastic pain or neural circuit pain, neural circuit conditions. And what's taking place here is that your brain is receiving danger signals. And because it's been going on for so long, there was like an underlying subconscious level of and a nerve, your nervous system was upregulated. And obviously this happened with the initial event. And then you get into fear because it's like, why is this happening? The doctors aren't figuring anything out. They don't really know how to fix this. Am I just going to have to live with this? You get uh, the fear itself can be a driver. The catastrophizing can continue the cycle. Um, so I know you've gone through this at different levels. So what we look at is you know, first of all, it's good to know that there's nothing wrong with your body. It's like my body's actually fine. Because if you understand mind body syndrome, there's no structural anatomical problem. It's being created in the brain. And because the brain creates all pain, anytime you feel pain, if you know, you break your ankle, or you, you touch a hot stove, there are receptors on your skin that allow you to know that there's something wrong, but the brain is able to choose whether there's pain or not. So the brain is always creating pain. 
Also, the brain, the subconscious mind has control over the autonomic nervous system, which the autonomic nervous system controls the genitourinary system, which can make you have to pee a lot, or it can control what's taking place in your pelvic floor. So whenever we can create a lot of safety in our brain, we're like, no, brain, you've had it wrong. I'm actually okay. Things were going on in the past that I was worried about. I was scared. I was fearful. I was anxious. Things happened when I was a kid. Things happened last year or whatever it was. I'm okay. So there's a process of entering into the present moment. It's called pain reprocessing therapy. You actually retrain your brain. I'm actually fine. There's nothing wrong with my physical body. And there isn't. There's actually nothing dangerous going on in your body. The pain and the dysfunction sucks and it's hard, but it's being created by neural circuits. So if you can retrain your brain and you can retrain it to safety and you start to lean into positive sensations, instead of negative ones, and you start to have more presence, and you're less in your head, and you're more in this moment. That's really the shift here. And the other thing that I want to mention are emotions. Emotions are really important. Emotions are energy and motion. And if you don't fully feel your emotions, which most of the people I see that I work with, they're not very good at feeling their emotions. They kind mm -hmm. of stuff them down. They don't want to. They just want to use their logical mind. And it's like, I want to use my logical mind. I don't really want to feel this right now. So the pain is being created typically for two reasons. One, it's a protector. It protects you from having to deal with the emotions beneath the surface that are hard. And because it's a diversion. Now, I'm going to create something in your body so that you can deal with that instead. The other thing that this pain is doing is it's a messenger. It's telling you something needs to change. So it could be that you've been living life in this high alert way, like anxiety and fear and worry and stress. And there are people who live lives that are super calm, actually. And they're on the same planet, right? Like during COVID, during the pandemic, there are people who are like, everything's great. That internal state does affect your physiology. It affects your body. How is this resonating so far? Good, good. I mean, I'm personally, I'm a person who I don't really keep things to myself or I don't talk about things like I, I'm the opposite. I talk about everything all the time, especially with my wife and with mostly everyone, to be honest. But in the other hand, yes, it, I'm a very anxious person and I get stressed very easy with anything. And that is probably what is causing everything. I think I mentioned as well in one of the one of the formularies that you sent me mm -hmm. that I used to masturbate a lot. And I used to masturbate in a very compulsive way. And I used to masturbate in a way that I used to hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it. And that was probably creating a lot of tension in the muscles. You were holding it like to work on ejaculation training or was it like edging practice or what are you talking about? Yes, to have more pleasure. Oh, to have more pleasure. Okay. Um, so it could have been an acute thing. Like if you masturbate five times in a day or you start doing this a lot or you, people are doing kegels and edging, yes, it can put some stress on the pelvic floor muscles. It's true. But even if that happens, the pelvic floor muscles kill them, they heal. So it would be an acute injury situation. The reason why it would turn into chronic is purely from neural circuit pain. So the reason why an injury, like you could break your ankle, it will heal. But if you really fear like, oh my God, my ankle, I hope it gets better. I get... The reason why we, we fear more about this is it's our, this is our private parts. Like as a man, we want to feel like we're a man, like I'm okay. I can have sex, everything. So we place a lot more importance on our penis or testicles than we do like on our ankle or our shoulder. We're like, ah, it'll heal by itself. And it does because we don't get in the way mentally. But what I wanted to point out, yeah. So like emotions are there for some people, for some, it sounds like you're pretty good at clearing those out, but it yeah. sounds like you have a little bit going on on the anxiety side and the stress side where it's a, it's a learning to trust. It's a learning to be okay with letting go. And everything, yeah. knowing everything's going to work out, that I think the message that your body is sending you is that because it's like, 
Jesus, you have to change the way you're being because you're killing us. Because that being an upregulated nervous system state, which is what happens when you're in anxiety, that fight, flight, or freeze response, you've got all the different chemicals going through your body. Imagine being in that state for years. It degrades the body and the body has to be like, please, like, please do something different. You've got to change. I think that's what's been going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I 100% know that is this because every time that I'm more stressed or I'm having a hard time is when I get worse. Right. And to be honest with you, since this last year, it's been getting so much better. But because I've been doing a lot of meditation and exercise and yoga, and I stop even masturbating, I stop watching porn, and I'm doing less, less sex, eh, eating healthy so I'm doing a lot to get better and I'm getting better but I'm still not completely well so yeah yeah. that was really good it sounds like you're doing a lot of things right you're doing really well that's amazing and I just want you to to de um disentangle the thought that the excessive masturbation has created the chronicity the chronic aspect would be this the anxiety and the brain so forgive yourself let go of that. Be like, I, you know, I, maybe I did this to myself. Go go inside of yourself. Be like, I, let, I forgive myself. I didn't hurt myself. I made choices that I did the best that I could in that moment in time. Because you were doing that compulsive behavior, yes, for pleasure, but also maybe escaping or there was something going on inside of your head. You, there's just a lot, right? And we use masturbation or sex or porn as an outlet to escape. Just like some people use alcohol and drugs. So what I mean, is just like, forgive yourself there. And then I love that you, you know, you stop watching porn and you're not masturbating by all means, having sex and connecting with your wife. Like it's a loving act as it makes sense. Like, don't be afraid of that. So definitely still do that. But even if you, yeah, I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, Meditating, the mindfulness, doing yoga to move your body in healthy ways. These are all, these are all great things. Um, you're on the right track because the more you can tell your, your brain gets messages of safety. It's like, it's okay. It's okay. Whether there's a recession going on, whether someone just died in your family, like things happen in life, right? So things are going to happen, but it's like, no, I'm always fine. And everything always works out for me and I can do this. And it sounds like you're on the right track. Um, are there any major questions you have for me, though, that I can help you with? And no, I mean, the only, only question I, I, I have, to be honest, I don't know if you can answer this, but I saw that you, you do also, like, you asked to do 21 days of uh, fruits and vegetables. I tried for six days doing that. I, was, I, I didn't know exactly what I could eat or not, and I didn't eat any carbs or potatoes or anything like that, but... On the sixth day, I work as a video editor, and as you might know, we have deadlines. Mm-hmm. I also have a, and he's uh, he's almost five years old, so it's like I'm constantly in a lot of like you know stress, and yeah. and like not having like six days of just vegetables. So at the sixth day, I was like, I need to eat something else. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I want to ask you basically if there is any recommendations or how I could do that. Right. So the 21 day cleanse is something I've mentioned before as an option for people to clear out their organs and to reset the gut bacteria. Can it be useful? Yes. I mean, for a lot of people eating a Western diet, they haven't given their body a break like their entire life. So fasting even just for 24 hours or taking a cleanse day where like on Sundays, you don't eat meat or you eat like less, you eat vegetables or something. Doing something where you just let your body have a little bit more time to filter things out, filter the toxins out is good. You don't have to do the 21 day cleanse. It's just an option. Some people, like I personally did a 21 day cleanse whenever I had pelvic floor issues and it helps me. Um, It helped me because I was just simplifying everything. I'm like, I'm not going to eat very much. I'm not going to work for a few days. I was just... I didn't, I mean, I worked some the whole time, but it could be useful, but you don't have to do it. But what I would say though, is you might want to do like a cleanse day or take like a few days off from eating certain foods. Um, it's really just, to, it's just good for your health in general. It's not that you have to do that to fix your, your pelvic floor though. Um, okay. that's what I would say. 
Okay. 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 That's good to know. You did mention though you're all, you're in stress all the time at work though. I think that's an important statement that you made. Let's talk about that a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I know it's a stress, stress at work because of deadlines and stuff like that. I studied filmmaking and I wanted to 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 do something related to filmmaking. I wanted to be a video editor, but I ended up doing working for a company just doing advertising and I it's not something that I, I really enjoy. So I I'm truly thinking about changing my career. I'm truly thinking of doing something else because I I want to do something that I'm more connected to people and I'm even thinking like doing a yoga course uh, as a teacher or something like that. So yeah. I I sort of want to be in movement. I'm working eight hours in front of a computer and it's not it's not something ideal to be honest. Right. That's understandable. So definitely listen to that, you know, listen to that. There could be something inside of you that wants to align to like more of your authentic self, your energy, the way you're meant to serve in the world. And yeah, you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to like quit your job. It might be that you do a yoga teacher training or that you make a little film project on the side and yeah, exactly. see where it goes from, from there. But if someone is in a position where they walk in the door to a job every day and like it cuts off their energy because they're doing what they don't want to do. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I want to move my body. I want to do this or that, but I have to, I have to just sit down. I got to finish this. I got to get it done by Friday. Imagine doing that for years and years and years and decades. It's you have, luckily we have the ability, there's choice, there's freedom, there's possibility. You know, you can create a new life if you choose. Um, so it's, again, it's letting go of the fear. It's like, can I go outside of my comfort zone and do something new? And this could be a, a moment for you for a transformation in that area too. Yeah. And that'll yeah. liberate your energy. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm doing what I, I actually want to do. And I'm using my skills and I'm helping people, but in a way that's, um, it won't be as stressful either. You'll have more, more uh, flexibility. And um, so, yeah, you still want to be able to relax and not be stressed even while you're working at this job. And I know you're getting better at that. But sometimes these things do lead us to making major life changes as well. Sometimes it's like changing careers, ending a relationship. Like there are different things that can happen, right? And that that, that could be part of it. Yeah, no, no, I I, I, I totally get you because I thought this is what I, what I wanted to do. And now I like, no, no anymore. And 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 I think the main reason is because of what happened to me as well. So everything happens for a reason. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes, that we say in this house all the time. So yeah. Yeah, that's true. I didn't know I was gonna be doing this <laughs> that I do right now. Um, I didn't know I was gonna have pelvic floor issues and go through all that. And but it was so that I could learn about mind body healing and help other people to discover that the pain will awaken you to a greater version of yourself. And honestly, my, all I do is I help people. I just remind people that they can heal themselves. Yeah. No, all healing, it's all healing. Great what you do. I think it's really, really great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jesus. Any like final quick questions before we wrap up? Is that everything? Is that helpful? No, no I mean, um, just want to say thank you very much. I'm thinking about uh, buying the course. I, I I I got many emails about the you know discount and stuff like that. I'm not in a great situation economically at the moment, but I'm trying to see if uh, I can get one of these deals at some point and buy buy the course. Um, I want to see how how uh, how I go. Um, probably until next year and then if next year things doesn't get much better then i will probably buy the course and see how how that goes but yeah, um, yeah use your tools you know you can keep clearing this out on your own and if you want some more support and it makes sense yeah we're here for you okay that's brilliant thank you so much it's really really great to meeting you it was awesome jesus we'll take care talk to you, you later too. bye